So our federal government researchers in the comb are telling us that our forage resources are in no position to support our livestock industry going forward. Um, they base this on the predicted changes in our climate that are happening and how variable the, the weather patterns are becoming. Most perennial pastures in the province are getting less than a ton an acre. Like it's pretty sad how depleted and sorry they look and for good reason. I mean economics play a huge factor in how we put our inputs and where we put our management and there just hasn't been the economics to put that into our um, perennial crops and when you think about um, in central Alberta brome alfalfa crop you know getting that three three bales three um, 1200 pound bales per acre so what's that 3600 pounds per acre compare that to what you can get off of green feed or um, any kind of annuals which are closer to the 5,000 uh, pounds per acre and then it kind of makes you like yeah like why bother right well the advantage of our perennial crops is that they are in a position to take the most effective and efficient use of the moisture that we do get particularly that moisture that comes in the spring they're already ready to go first thing in the spring there's no evaporation off the surface if they're managed properly anyway and uh, so they have like in a really good position to just get going in the spring and to get you that maximum production this is why we have perennials predominantly in the south we need that winter moisture to get things going um, we don't have to stall and wait until we get the seed in the ground and then hope for the moisture after they're ready to go and uh, you get your maximum production out of those perennials so when we have this kind of variability perennials are the way to go and when we have really cold winters perennials are the way to go they are just more resilient to the kind of variable weather that we are going to be experiencing or it's predicted that we will be experiencing but the thing to know about forages and why they say that they're not positioned uh, for this kind of climate change is because of how we've been treating them most um, decisions on the farm are made on a cash basis so money coming in money going out it's easy to make a decision about how many how much inputs to to put on your crop when you know how much it's worth in the end. And forages, 95% of our forages never hit the market. We feed them to our animals. And so there is no cash value assigned to them. And when that happens, we tend to devalue them, right? And it's hard for us to make decisions. And so that hypothetical accounting that needs to happen, those top third producers that we find in the AgriProfits program, that's what they do. They value their forage, they understand how much it actually is worth to them, um, the opportunity cost that they have, and they start managing their forages with that kind of accounting in mind, which means they're not afraid to put in the money to adjust the management or add the inputs. And that's really important. So if you think about a southern Alberta, three bales per acre, 1,200 pounds, brome alfalfa, you're actually removing 100 pounds of nitrogen, 100 pounds of potassium, 25 pounds of phosphorus, and 11 pounds of sulfur per acre every time you take those bales off. So if you think about that, how much do you have to put back in there in order to keep your production up? And we consider that most of our pastures, like we put them into hay, we can hay them for three years, and then it's not worth it to make hay on it anymore, so we throw the cows out there, and then we beat the shit out of them for another five. So it's just kind of our habit, it is our culture, but those producers have clued in to how valuable those perennials are, and to managing those nutrients going onto their perennials, are have a huge advantage, and they're making money. So. This is what we need to do. We need to keep this, the nutrients going. So right here, I'm in a pasture that um, the owner has been playing around with to see about how they can improve the nitrogen and uh, nutrients in this pasture in well, different ways. So I came out and I did some clips and I'm just going to show you, see how low to the ground that is, but there's still some nice big wide leaved plants in here. So the, the um, mix of species in here is still really good um, so I don't think I need to actually reseed this uh, there's a few places where there's a lot of molehills so it might not hurt to even the pasture out but I actually don't really need to reseed it now over here is where the bale grazing happened and I'll just stick my leg in there it's coming up to just over my thigh how tall this is and in contrast, you can see how it just dies right off. So in the low areas here, this is our 800 pounds per acre 
Um, so not even a bale an acre is what I would get off of this. Uh, and the nutrients are really low. So even the quality of the, it's not just the amount, but also the quality of the feed. And then I get into this nice bale grazing. You can see my big dog in there. <laughs> and this is on a dry year, right? Like this is the production I would get. That's 90, um, 96 more grazing days here than here.